Hello students, in this video we're going to look at solving systems with matrices and that's on page 4 and 5 of your notes. So you're going to start on the back of this paper. So turn that over, page 4, and the next page, page 5. So page 4 and 5, make sure you have them both in front of you. Solving systems with matrices. What is a matrix? Matrix is a wonderful movie from the 1990s. But other than that, a matrix is an array or structure of numbers that represents a system of linear equations. Oops. The plural of matrix is matrices. They can make complicated linear systems easier to work with. Now, this may look so far like it's really cryptic or maybe really difficult, but according to my students in previous years, this is one of the easier things that we do all year. So hopefully you guys will like it. In order to use a matrix, your equations must be in standard form, which is why your previous video was this. So what you did here, you're going to have to do before you can use a matrix. So then put the coefficients of each variable in the appropriate column. So coefficients are the number that's multiplied by a variable. So let's just look at the first one so I can show you how this works. So this is a structure that you'll ultimately put in your calculator. There is a way to do this by hand, which we don't do in this class. I believe the advanced class might do it. And if you go to college as a math major, then you'll learn it there too. But in this class, we only do it in the calculator. So let me show you how to set it up. You're going to have in your calculator a column for the x's, a column for the y's, and a column for the, the equals the constant. So you want to put your coefficients in there. So your coefficients are these numbers. This would be a 1, and then 3, and then 7. So your x coefficient is 3. Your y coefficient is a negative 2. That's one of the biggest mistakes students make is forgetting that negative, so just be real careful. And your constant is 5. And then the second equation, it's an x, but it's really a 1x because we just don't write the 1. So your coefficient's 1. Your y coefficient is 3, and your constant is a 7. So in the calculator, you would put this in there. And I'll show you on the next page exactly what to put in the calculator. But for now, just kind of that's what it's going to look like. Or if we had three variables, so if it was one of those 3D equations, so those three-dimensional equations, it might have a Z in it. <clears throat> so you would have four columns, and three rows in your calculator. So you have your coefficients. It's an x, but it's really a 1x, so put a 1. That coefficient to 2. That coefficient is a negative 1. And the constant to 6. And I'm running kind of big, but... Next, your x coefficient is a negative 4. Your y coefficient, oh, it's a negative... It's really a negative 1. And the z, it's really a 1z. And then 0. And then finally, your third equation, it's a 2x, a 3y, a negative 2z, and a 5. So that's what you would put in your calculator. And again, on the next page, I'll show you how to type it exactly. But first, for each system of equations below, write the equations in standard form if necessary, and then write them inside a matrix. So let's look at that first one. So notice the first one is okay. The first one is in standard form. Again, look at the other side of the page. So you want your x's and y's together, or your x, y, z together, and then your constant on the right. And that's what this one looks like. So this one's okay. This one we need to rearrange. 
I want the x to be over here, so I need to subtract it. So negative 2x plus y equals negative 1. So here are my two equations, right there. So I don't need this one anymore. So I'm going to have an x column, a y column, and an equal constant column. So my coefficient is a 4, a negative 1, and a 3, and then a negative 2, a 1, and a negative 1. And that's what I would put into my calculator as the matrix. So let's check out example 2. Now first, is this equation in standard form? Okay, so we actually had to put the first one in standard form. It should come out negative x plus y plus 2z equals 1. The second one, is it in standard form? So the second one's already in standard form. That one's good. We don't need to mess with it. What about the third one? Okay, good. So the third one was almost in standard form. We just had to rearrange these three terms, but it was almost there. So now that my three equations are in standard form, I can put them in my matrix. So I'm going to have an x column, a y column, a z column, and an equal constant column. So my coefficient for x, negative 1, positive 1, 2, positive 1, right there. For my second one, that's a 1x, negative 1y, 1z, and equals 1. And then finally, it's a 3x, negative 2y, 2z, equals 6. And that's how you put them in a matrix. Page 5. So go to page 5. There's not a lot for us to really do on page 5 as far as writing, but I am going to show you two ways to put this in the calculator to find out where these lines intersect. So we're going to find out where these, these are actually planes, they're not even lines. Find out where these intersect. That's what we're going to do. So there's two different ways. I'm going to show you both ways in the calculator. Then you can use whichever one you like better. So we're going to go to the home page and press 1 for new document. So home page, press 1 for new document. If it asks you about saving, just put no. Add a calculator page. Now we're going to press this button. That's where you found the absolute value in our last unit. So right here, press that. And we want this right here. So click that. Now we're going to enter the number of rows. That's how many equations you have. So let's look at our problem. We have three equations in this problem. So I want three rows. Then I want to enter the number of columns. That's how many variables you have. And I have, let's see, x, y, z. I have three variables, so I want three columns. So that's good. So press Enter after you've done that. And then I'm going to enter my coefficients. So just like you did here, just kind of like that, except we don't have this column. We're just going to enter these. Oops, use this example. We're just going to enter these right here. So what this is, this is my x column right here. So I'm going to put my x's. The second column are my y's. So I'm going to put 5, negative 5, 3. And the third column are my z's. So I'm going to put negative 3, 2, negative 7. And then just press the right arrow to get out of the matrix. Okay, then we're going to put exponent negative 1 for inverse. So exponent right here, negative 1. So exponent negative 1. And then press the right arrow again to get out of the exponent. So, so far we've got this.
Okay? So now we're going to repeat step three. So go back up here. Press this button. And then choose that option. And we still have three rows, but now we're going to enter one for the number of columns. And then press enter. And that's where I'm going to put my constants. So these three numbers, I'm going to put them right here. So 16, negative 8, 0. Now when I press enter, it's going to tell me the x, y, and z values for my intersection. So right here. So let's copy that down. So this is my x value. This is my y value. This is my z value. So it goes in the same order, just kind of transpose. That's what they call it, transpose. So x, y, z, x, y, z. So that means they intersect at 1, 3, 2. So they interact at the point in space, 1, 3, 2. So let's look at method 2. So method 2, I'm going to use the exact same problem as before. So we already know what the answer is going to be. We know the answer is going to be 1, 3, 2. But I like this method a lot better, and last year almost all my students chose to use this method. So it's called gaussian elimination. And this is something I learned to do in college by hand, but now you're going to let the calculator do it for you. So go to your home page and press 1 for new document. Again, if it asks you about saving, just put no. Add a calculator page. Now we're going to press menu, matrix and vector, and then reduce row echelon form. So RREF. You can also just type in RREF parentheses. That works too. So now we're going to press our matrix button and choose the same option. And we still want how many equations you have is still going to be your rows. So we still have three equations, so we still want three rows. This time, though, for the number of columns, we have how many variables plus one. So I have one, two, three, four. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look like that right there. Four columns. And then press enter. Okay, now I am going to put in my coefficients. So this is just like you guys were doing here. This is exactly the same thing. So just put in your coefficients. So I have my x's first, 7, 3, 5. And it doesn't matter. If you prefer entering them across, you can too. It really doesn't make a difference. And then my y's are 5, negative 5, 3. And then my z's are negative 3, oops, negative 3, 2, negative 7. And finally, my constants are 16, 8, negative 8. Don't do like me and forget those negatives. And then 0. And then you press Enter, and it gives you that. So let's copy this real quick, and then I'll show you what that means. All right, so this is what you got out of the calculator. Now, here's what this means. Notice that you've got this column here, 1, 3, 2, which matches what we know our solution is because we got it already. And then what these mean, this is x, y, z, remember, x, y, z. So this really just means x equals 1. And then there's no x here, but there is a y, so y equals 3. And then here there's no x, y, but there's a z. So z equals 2. So it means exactly the same thing as this did. Except I feel like this is easier to type in. That's just me, though. So anyway, your solution is the same as it was before, 1, 3, 2. Now. Sometimes you'll get no solution or infinitely many solutions, and here's what they'll look like on this method. So if your system has no solution, then you're going to get a row of zeros and then an, a one right there. It doesn't matter what's above that. It just If these are zeros and that's a one, 
then that's going to be a no solution uh, situation. Whereas if it's infinitely many solutions, like if your lines or your planes intersect at a bunch of points, you are going to see a row entirely of zeros. And that means infinitely many solutions right there. And again, it doesn't matter what's above there um, in this case. It's just a full row of zeros is what you're looking for.